Hi there, this is Janet Simmons and welcome to the second video in week three of our workplace learning course. In this video, I'll introduce you to a few formal workplace learning strategies and models. In this video, we'll look at when to use formal workplace learning and how organizations may develop these sessions and examine some strategies used for formal workplace learning. You may have experienced formal workplace learning in your workplace. Think of different training sessions you've had. What do you think are the key ingredients of training for it to be considered formal learning? Now think of how the training was designed. How was it different from non-formal or informal training sessions? Clive Shepard, who has written extensively about workplace learning, believes most people involved in workplace training, from the top level to designers and including the learners themselves, believe that formal courses are required for learning and learning is best addressed through formal learning. That isn't to say that formal workplace learning does not have its place. Shepard states that there are four instances where formal workplace learning is necessary. These include for regulatory purposes, when proficiency is vital, when providing initial training to a novice and qualifications are required. There are professionals that need to demonstrate that they have knowledge and skills to do their job, for example, healthcare professionals or real estate agents. Often the first two points go hand in hand. Once again, we can look to the healthcare field, but also to architects and engineers. The third point speaks to those who may be just starting out and need a solid grounding in the important material or to approaches used in the specific field. Once this is obtained, the learner may begin to augment the required knowledge and skills with other types of learning, such as non-formal or informal. The final point is often considered for internal promotion or for consideration for an external move within an industry. George Seaman, is a Canadian education researcher and one of the founders of MOOCs. He sees many important changes in our connected world. It is moving much quicker than how they can produce and envision learning. Technology and our social fabric have changed and he believes we are using outdated means and that we haven't changed with the technology. George also advocates for the learning development cycle. Some of you may look at this model and recognize its similarities with the ADDIE model. Stage one is where we could make the decisions about what type of learning. Will it be formal, informal, or another type of design? Consideration for this choice often resides in the budget and delivery. The analysis portion of stage one focuses on the learner, such as motivation and technology. The second stage is the creation stage, where design, development, and delivery takes place. And as the diagram illustrates, this is often assessed and changes made after the pilot or trial of the session is run. This is often tested on a safe audience, such as a small group of employees. What is important at this stage is the authentic feedback from the audience so that revisions are pertinent. You'll notice that stages four and five include ongoing evaluations. Clive Shepard has identified four stages of formal workplace learning. The first is exploration. Here the learner determines the learning process and may include tactics such as job aids for just-in-time training. The second strategy is guided discovery. Here the learner is guided but there is room for the learner to determine the approach to learning and maintain responsibility for the learning. Although not listed here, problem-based learning, such as the assignments in this course, are an example of guided discovery. Next, there is structured instruction. Depending on the learning design, these can be highly interactive. However, the nature of this type of learning does not provide learners with the ability to customize their learning. Finally, we have exposition. You may recognize this strategy as one traditionally used in classroom setting with lectures and prescribed readings. What is interesting about this chart is that the upper portion is learner-centered and the lower portion is trainer-centered. You should also consider that these strategies are often mixed. For example, this course has guided discoveries, such as the PBL assignments. It also has expositions where you are given required readings or videos to watch. Shepard has recognized this along with a wide variety of formal learning delivery methods. 
He believes that strategies chosen depend to a large extent on whether the shape and the size are appropriate for the job. This is just a small example of the strategies and models used in workplace learning. As always, you should look to the support material provided in our Blackboard site to help you gain deeper understanding of the issues raised in this video. There are three synthesis questions for this video. I'd like you to reflect on these questions and recall some of the strategies you have observed in your workplace. We will be discussing your answers to these questions in the upcoming tutorial. Formal workplace learning strategies are time consuming to execute and place pressure on the learner to retain the information for assessment purposes. However, because these organizations require employee certification, it is impossible to do away with formal workplace learning. Thanks for watching.